Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and you are watching an Encounter TV interview. I'm very excited because my guest today says he wants to make you uncomfortable, and that's good for you. I promise you're going to want to watch this. My friend, Evangelist Don Coleman. How you doing? Joins me today all the way from Washington, D.C. Yes, sir. It's been a while <laughs> since we've chatted, but I am glad because I've been wanting to get you on this broadcast because there's an anointing on your life. Hallelujah. And today we're talking about the fire of God. You said that's the message you put in your heart. So I don't want to take too much of your time, but I do want a little bit of an intro for our viewers. Tell us about your ministry, what you're doing, how life is going for you. Awesome, awesome. Well, um, my ministry is Fire Revival Global Ministries. Uh, we started back in 2011. Um, I actually started preaching when I was 13 years old. I'm now 23 uh, years old, 24 in July. <laughs> um, but I started preaching when I was 13 years old. I got saved at six years old, um, was filled with the Holy Spirit at 13 as well. And from then, from 13 years old, I mean, I've, I've been preaching, uh, first started preaching to my teddy bears, you know, baptizing them <laughs> at home. Um, but I got out, um, the Holy Spirit just began to, to lead me, uh, gave me a platform to preach on and just begin to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the passion, with the fire, uh, with the fuego de Dios <laughs> of God. Um, and it's beginning to travel, do miracle crusades, anointing services, revivals, wherever the Holy Spirit led me, however he led me, I went with what he said to do and I did it. So hundreds, thousands of souls saved, um, demons casted out, delivered uh, and whatnot, not, not going with the tradition of man, uh, even at a young age, because I remember growing up in the church that I did with the denomination cap that I was on it. Uh, they told me in order for me to preach, I had to be 18 years old. Um, but I, I said, no, that's not what God told me. That's not what the Holy Spirit had birthed into me. Um, so I, I began that. to I began to go out and begin to preach, uh, even on the streets, before I was able to get a platform, a stage, a mic. Uh, that didn't stop me. I began to preach over the internet, Ustream. I began to preach over uh, 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 in the streets, going out, winning souls and whatnot, and uh, just begin to be led by the Holy Spirit. And of course now, like I said, I'm leading Fire Revival Global Ministries where we're taking the fire, we're taking the, the fire, the anointing of the Holy Spirit wherever we go. There is the fire of God on yes. your preaching. And you hear people kind of throw out accolades these days very casually. But when I say the fire of God is on your preaching, I mean the fire of God yeah. is on your preaching. Not just the passion, not just the excitement, yeah. but the anointing is there. Yes, yes. I've watched your things on Facebook and I've seen your live broadcast. And you think in your heart, I, I look through your messaging, that the church needs to be revived. Yes. Talk yes. to me about that. Yes, the church needs to be revived. I believe right now where we're at um, in the 21st century of the church is not where necessarily where God wants us to be. I believe that right now we're, we're in a place where we're all right. We're comfortable sitting down in our seats during services. We're comfortable uh, uh, seeing the normal thing. We're comfortable, you know, hearing, okay, uh, seeing here, but this is what's happening first. This is what's happening second. We're, we're comfortable with the schedule, but I believe that God is ready to wreck our services. I believe He's ready to wreck our our Sunday morning or Saturday, whatever morning worship services. Uh, I believe that He's ready to to uh, cause the dead to be brought into our services again and watch them raise to life. I believe that He's we're, we're ready to see. And, I'm, and I, you see, I believe that we're really God's really trying to have us to come to the understanding that the supernatural should not be abnormal anymore. That the supernatural should be normal in the church. We ought to see these things. It, it shouldn't surprise us. What it should do, what it should have us do is to say, oh, we, we thank God, we, we thank you, but we're not surprised by the miraculous acts of the wow. Holy Spirit. We're not surprised by the fire coming down. We're not surprised by the creative miracles it, because it's normal to us. This is where God wants the church to be. He wants us to be in a place where it's normal. But first, we must become uncomfortable. First, we must say enough is enough. I'm tired of the normal. I'm tired of the tradition. And, and am I saying tradition? I'm not saying tradition is completely wrong. But I'm saying that we have to get to a place where we're saying tradition is no longer enough. You That's see, because good. the Old Testament was tradition. The New Testament brought a newness. And right now, the church, we're still living in the Old Testament. We're still living in a place where the Holy Spirit, the presence of God is here, but, but he's not tangible. But where the New Testament brings us where the presence of God is here and he's tangible. Right now, we're still living in the Old Testament where we talk about these things. We talk about miracles. We talk about Jesus healing the sick. We talk about Jesus raising the dead. But whatever happened to the greater works? 
Hmm. You see, it's good for us, the church, to talk about it. But now God is saying, I want to not only have you talk about it, I want you to be able to live in it. I want this to become a lifestyle. I want you to be a part of the culture, <laughs> the, the culture of the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit and with the fire of God. So you say God wants us to become uncomfortable first. Yes. What does that look like? Yes. What does that look like? God having us to become un uncomfortable looks like us putting ourselves, surrendering ourselves, and putting ourselves on the altar, putting our lives on the altar. You see, a lot of times, you know, we during during uh, services on Sunday morning, we we we're just so happy to run down to the altar and to give our life to Jesus Christ, and, or we're so ha glad to or happy to run down to the altar and and ask Jesus for, or ask, uh, sorry, the pastor for prayer or whatnot, and then we leave back the same. Hmm. Just like that, in the, instant, in the moments of minutes where our life could have never been the same, we go back and it is the same. The reason being is because so many people run to the altar not to kill themselves, not to kill their, their flesh, all right, but they run to the altar to, to, to grab something from the preacher, to grab something from the anointing, running away and leaving the same. But God is calling us to be uncomfortable. That looks like us going to the altar, whether it's in your home. I'm not talking about a physical altar, but, but, but coming to an understanding that I need to go to the altar and I need to kill the deeds of our flesh, of your flesh. I, I need to go to this, this, to this altar and I need God to send down his fire on me because Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 12 talks about how once more, yet once more signifies God removing those things that are not supposed to be there, removing those things from the earth, shaking your life, and then replacing those things with those that are, with, which those things that are supernatural into us. So I believe that that looks like that is a perfect picture of us coming to the altar, asking God to kill those things, kill those religious things, kill those traditional things that are on us that, that tells us that, hey, you know, we can continue to fornicate. We can continue to, to smoke weed. We can continue to sin and yet still be in the church. No, 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 no. The Bible talks about in Revelation where Jesus said that, you know, he's, spew, he's spitting us up because he's, we're not even in his system. We have become lukewarm. Jesus is calling for us to kill the deeds of our flesh. He's calling us to live in a life of holiness. He's calling us to live a life according to the word of God. That's what that looks like. <laughs> Just the other day, I saw you post something about integrity. Yes, and yes. I think this goes right in line with Absolutely. what you're talking about. Because the fire of God, it's yes. cleansing and it does Absolutely. produce integrity. Amen, amen. Talk to me about people and their integrity when it comes to being on fire for the Lord. Yes, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of believers, a lot of preachers, especially young preachers, my agent, and as well as older preachers, um, and a lot of Christians, period, you know, they, they want to receive the fire, but don't, they don't want to live a life of integrity. They don't have, uh, 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 they don't have the character to, to perform, or not to perform, but to minister, uh, uh, to be a, a preacher, a young preacher, or to be a, a pastor, being an evangelist, apostle, or whatever that is. Um, uh, they don't have the, the character or the integrity, meaning that they, they, they'll, they'll love to accept the engagements, they'll love to, ex to preach around the world, but yet, behind those closed doors in that ministry, behind, behind the closed doors where, where, where you, know, you don't have your, your partners or you don't have your, your, uh, uh, your ministry workers with you, what are you doing behind those closed doors? You see, because it all lines up, like you said, with the fire of God. Because God watches us, you know, he, he's everywhere, so he sees everything that we do. And yet, a lot of times, especially in ministry, especially, especially in ministry, a lot of preachers believe that just, just because a human can't see me, I'm good. Hmm. But that's not so. You have to have integrity. You have to have character, especially if you want to go far in ministry, especially if you want to go far in life, period. Whether it's in ministry or not in ministry, wherever it is, you have to have integrity and character. So integrity is one of the results of the fire of God. Absolutely. What else does the fire of God do? Okay, so you're wow. talking about how we need the fire and how the church needs to come to a place where they're accepting the supernatural back into the the essence of our culture again. Yes. And I totally agree with that. Now, what else happens? The fire of God starts stirring. Talk yeah. to me about a church on fire. Absolutely. So Matthew 3, 11 tells us that, that Jesus, John is speaking, and he says that Jesus, he will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I love that scripture. He will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So first we have to understand that uh, 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 where does the fire come from? You know, where does the fire, uh, you know, we talk about this fire. Is this a physical fire? Is this a spiritual fire? What is it? And, and it is a spiritual fire. And we have to understand that it comes with the Holy Spirit. If I can give you an example, uh, if, if I'm checking into a hotel, right, the hotel will accept me as long as I'm paying a payment, all right? And not only will the hotel accept me, but the hotel is going to accept my luggage. 
I don't know, I've never been to a hotel where it said, you can come, but your luggage can't, right? Right. <laughs> So the Holy Spirit is not only, I'm sorry, but the, uh, the hotel is not only going to accept myself, but it's also going to accept what I brought with it, my luggage. The same thing with the Holy Spirit. When we accept the Holy Spirit, we just can't accept Him by Himself. We have to accept what comes with Him. Hmm. So the scripture says that Jesus, He will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. There are so many people that want to just take the Holy Spirit and not take the fire, but, oh, my Rufsi, Kihandala Baha'i, excuse me. That's okay. <laughs> but, but, but right now in the church, God is trying to baptize us, not with just the Holy Spirit, but also with the fire of God, with also with the fire of God. You see, Luke chapter 12, verse 49 says that I, Jesus is saying, I came to send fire on the earth and how I'd wish it were already kindled. Jesus himself is saying, listen, I've come to bring fire. Hmm. So many people skip over that verse. Jesus is saying, I've come to bring fire on this earth. And how I wish you would already was, con uh, was, was, was kindled in Hebrews 12, 29 says, for our God is a consuming fire. And then we, we talk about in Acts, right? Acts chapter 2, where the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost, where, which, uh, you know, people who flow in the Spirit love, love Acts. And Acts chapter 2, where the church was born, where the church was birthed, uh, talks about how uh, 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 the Holy Spirit came as a rushing wind. And that's when the fire fell down. That's when the fire, the Bible says they begin to speak in tongues as a fire. And then we go into Acts chapter 4, verse 31, which says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. Hallelujah, was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So what else, what else, Evangelist David, what else comes with, what else comes with a fire? One thing I can say is the passion of God, the passion to see God's will done, the passion to see souls saved, the passion to see other souls set on fire, the passion to see the glory of God to manifest. I have never seen a preacher who was on fire for God ever doled. I have never seen a preacher who was always on fire for God, never, never had a boring moment in their life. Hmm. Why? Because they always kept that, that, that candle lit. They always kept the fire ignited on the inside of them, which, of course, we, we, we receive the fire of God by studying the Word of God. We receive the fire of God by surrendering our lives to Him. We receive the fire of God by staying in His presence, by drawing a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. The anointing is on you right now. Hallelujah. Talk to that one watching right Hallelujah. now who's saying, I'm lukewarm. Hallelujah. Help me, help me, Hallelujah. evangelist Don Hallelujah. Coleman. They're Listen, saying I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you right now. Uh, you who, who are, you're living a life of lukewarmness. You're living a life of you. You're on the fence. Even right now, as I'm talking, you're one day you're in the church on Sunday, but Friday and Saturday, you're in the club. Friday and Saturday, you're doing everything that you don't, that you're not supposed to do. And I want to talk to you, you. Yes, I'm talking to you right now. I want to let you know that God wants to release his fire. Hallelujah. He wants to release his anointing on your life right now. He wants to release a glory on you right now that, I mean, I mean some of you all, you may be feeling it on your body right now. Well, guess what? Don't stop it. Don't stop and surrender right now. If all you can do is lift up your hands, lift up your hands right now. If all you can do is say the name of Jesus right now, he said he's here for you. He's longing to, 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 to hug on you. He's longing to embrace you if you just surrender right now because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here. So right now I pray for every, I pray for you right now who are watching right now. I pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit will fall on you. I pray that you would grow a boldness to reach those who are unsaved. I pray that you would... Oh, no longer will you be quiet under the anointing. No longer will you shut up when they tell you to shut up. But you will decree and declare Jesus Christ. You will decree and declare that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. I prophesy over your life even right now. Glory to God that the fire of the Holy Spirit, just like an axe, is falling on you right now. Come on. Oh, those, oh my God from Zion. Even you who are watching, you're being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you've already been filled, you're being refilled even right now. I pray that the Holy Spirit will fall on your households will fold on your jobs right now in the name of King Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, we agree right now in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Father, I pray right now that the fire of the yes, Holy Lord. Ghost would consume that one watching. Hallelujah. Lord, let your fire consume yes, the flesh in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, burn away all that is not of you until all that shines is the majestic countenance of Jesus. And Father, I pray for cleansing, I pray for passion, and I pray for renewed strength in the matchless name of yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I feel the anointing, Hallelujah. Evangelist Don. <laughs> There's something Glory on you, man. And you know, 
this this is why we do this. We love that the anointing of the Holy Spirit can just flow through this program. Yes. I love that you prayed in tongues on my program. <laughs> there, I don't, there's, there'll be some comments, well, you're not supposed to do it without an interpreter. They should go reread 1 Corinthians 14. Yes, yes. But, you know, I love that the Holy Spirit just flows through you, and that I love your ministry. I think you're anointed, and you're, you know, you're, you're in this season where you've not just begun the ministry, but yes. you, you've just christened the yes, ministry, yes, right? Absolutely. You just, you know, as far as official paperwork and all. Definitely. You were ministering since you were 13. Amen. That's something we have in common. And, and now you've been married for, for... For one year. For one year. For one year in a few days. In a few days. Yes. And this is May, what, May 4th, yeah. 2017. Yep. So if you watch this, you know, 20 years from now, he's not been married for a year, <laughs> probably more. Uh, but, but, you know, how can they get a hold of your ministry? How can they get a hold of what God is doing uh, through your life? Reach me um, on my website, which is www.firerevivalglobalministries. You can also reach me on Facebook. My like page is Pastor Don Coleman. So that, that website's up on the screen right now. And I just want to say this, pastors, you know, we often say we need the next generation to rise, but then when they start to, we don't give them opportunities. And I'm in the same generation as him, so I know what I'm talking about. Pastors would tell me, oh, you need, you need to rise. And the moment you do, they're like, well, wait a minute, you need experience. <laughs> well, you need experience to have experience, right? Right, right. So, but, but Pastor Don Coleman, he's been ministering since he was 13. He's seasoned. He's... He's anointed. He's been, he, there's a word in him. And it's not, you're not doing him a favor by having him come to your church. He's doing you a favor by going. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you, have Pastor Don Coleman, Evangelist Don Coleman, come in, bring him in, get him into your church, get him at your conferences. He's going to bless you. Go check out his stuff on his website and see what God is doing through his ministry. There's, it's not just a preaching gift. You've got a sample, this little sample of the preaching <laughs> gift on his life. But there's also a healing gift. There's a prophetic gift. And I know he's a man of integrity. Amen. And you can see the presence of Jesus on him. And so I just want to encourage you, connect with this man's ministry. And those of you who are looking for ministries to support, get behind evangelist Don Coleman. Help us out. Look, we need more voices. This is not a competition. This is a kingdom. And there's Amen. only one king. His name Hallelujah. is Jesus. And so this generation, we're not going to compete with each other. Right. We're going to complement one that's another. Right. Amen. And so that's why you see us working together. Support this. Get behind this man of God and help him do what God has called him to do. And you watch, and God will do it for you too. Amen. Well, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for having me. Very anointed. I appreciate you coming on. Well, that's it for this edition of Encounter TV Interviews. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.